What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Barefoot Garage. Tonight, we're doing some more seals on the 914. Let's turn the car from this into this. All right, next seals we need to do. We need to do the door seals. These are the inners. These are the outers. And both of mine are in not great shape. I don't, this isn't actually a door seal. This is just a piece of the vinyl, which we no longer need. And like a piece of edge molding. I also have never had the correct pieces. I also have never had the correct pieces of this. Uh, an early car should have silver or stainless ones. Unfortunately, when I got my car, I didn't think I would need those pieces because I never anticipated having a nice complete interior. And I think I sold them to Auto Atlanta. So uh, 914 rubber has got us hooked up with all the new parts we need to clean this area up and turn it into something much, much nicer. While we're in here, we're going to change the seals around the door locks, get these functioning perfect as well. It is always a great day with new parts from 914 Rubbercom. Shout out to these guys for getting us set up with some new threshold plates, the out inner door seals, the outer door seals, as well as the door handle gasket set. So 914 Rubber is a great place to get all the odds and ends that you didn't know you needed for your car. Honestly, I never really bothered having threshold plates and it didn't bother me not having it. Once I put them on, uh, yeah, it makes a huge difference. It makes the car look a lot more finished, holds the carpet in better. Overall, it's just excellent. Should not require any drilling or anything. Your car should have the holes for these ready to go. And so uh, let's dive into the tools and parts and then we'll start tearing the car apart. All right, outer door seals. Unless somebody glued yours in, this tool job should be able to be done by hand. These guys, your inner door seals, you just need something to cut these with uh, to length. They are always a little bit long, which is excellent. You can get them in nice and place without stretching it. This is a super easy install. For our threshold plates, you'll need whatever you have to remove your old ones. Typically, that's a Phillips head. Uh, I've got a Phillips head here, and I've got an awl for kind of getting through the carpet so that it's easier to start our fasteners. Now, they come with stainless steel fasteners, focus for the inner plate right here, these six. I really wanted to use these to uh, do some stainless steel fasteners for the outer one as well. It has these plastic push-in tees, um, just not my favorite. I wanna use stainless fasteners even if it's not exactly how it was. I do believe they use screws or plastic rivets to begin with. So what I went and got is stainless pan head number eight screws they're half inch these are just hardware store screws so you could theoretically put a countersunk screw in it but this doesn't have a countersink it's flush so it looks good it looks finished with the stainless screw so that is my preference if you're going to go with the stainless screws you need two four six eight ten twelve for the outer and the inner ones come from 914 rubber for this guy over here for this door handle gasket set you just need a 10 mil something to remove the door panel the screwdriver to remove your window crank and then you will need an Allen key. These Allen key sockets are excellent, especially the ball end ones uh, for taking the door handle off. So pop the door handle off, pop that on, put it back, put the door panel on and you are good to go. So let's go over to the car and we will start taking all the old junky stuff out. So I apologize if you can hear this whirring noise in the background. This is a sea devil light. It's a balloon with a fan in there. And it's the only way I can do anything after dark here because the garage is full. That 914 you may see videos on is getting an engine swap. It is not mine, uh, but my car is outside getting worked on. So if we're talking for removal, let's do the inner door seal first. It's just simply a matter of pulling it out. Super easy. The outer door seal should be equally simple. You can see somebody put a little bit of epoxy on that. Mine's got overspray on it, but it just runs 
all the way down under the door and up right up to there and you can see mine ripped a little bit so i'm gonna have to work this last little piece out here there's probably some glue in this um but we'll get this guy all the way out and ready to go uh in place so i typically install would install this with no glue just in case you need to pop it out or something else is changing but that's really the case and then this guy just undo these screws pull it out and we'll give this a quick clean before we put it back together and all the stuff's out so uh interesting thing about my car don't ask me why this is the fender flare attached to the rocker panel this is the rocker panel this is the fiberglass you can see it just turns to metal right here this rocker is glassed in the entire way down so this isn't coming off you can see there's just a tiny little bubble right here and a little bubble right here i don't really know what's happening right there so you'll see this is the track that inner seal runs in all the way here at the bottom and all the way up to right here at the top and it seems right there with the uh the triangle window so i am just going to take a little bit of simple green give this a quick clean at some point i might actually come back and just jam this car and uh get all this back to black my car was actually factory black hello 41 uh so there's tons of overspray in spots but uh well i don't want to ruin this part I may come in and jam this all in black so it looks real nice underneath here. So for now, let's get it clean. All right, we are going to start with the outer door seal. So I'm on the passenger side, and that is the way that the profile sits. When you put it into this track, you want that edge to stand up like that. So you can see that this edge will touch in to this surface here as we go. So I'm going to start on the inner side, and I'm just going to push this in as I go around and I'm gonna count on that friction to hold it in. You can definitely put a little something in here at the top. I am not gonna start with that. Typically when I do a seal, if I can put it in dry so that I can make adjustments or change it or take it out or whatever, I'm gonna do that. And if it doesn't stay very good, then I'll throw a little seal in there later on. So we're just gonna work this all the way around the perimeter of the door and we'll be good to go. There we go. We're in all the way around. It looks a lot nicer. This should stay in here pretty well. I'm a little worried the bottom is gonna flap off here, but uh, generally it seems okay. So a little bit of uh, weather stripping and heating where needed. So we talked about it being nice and long. When you're doing a seal like this, one of the things that the guys have told me at 914 Rubber is you don't wanna stretch it. You want it in a relaxed state. So I'm almost pushing it back in and trying to make sure that I haven't stretched it anywhere especially in these corners. If you stretch it, the profile shrinks and it won't get a good seal. So try when you're putting this in, just keep it under the least amount of tension possible. The opposite of what we did when we did some of these seals, you want to just put this in nice and slow. We did not do this one very well and you want to not stretch it. So eventually rubber stuff can shrink. So try and put it in nice and straight and just grab yourself a little razor blade, cut that all flush, maybe taper it in and you are good to go for the outer door seals. As far as I know, these are the same for all years of 914. Should be just like that if you're starting on the door handle side. All right, the outer door seal's done. We'll do the door latch last. What I'm gonna work on now is the inner seal and the inner threshold. Uh, what I find is best, let me see if I can put the camera down here. Mm, maybe not. Uh, what I think is best is to take your inner threshold. So this is gonna sit like this. It's gonna go over the edge of the rubber and hold it down so when you come in and out of the threshold at least for me when i'm swinging my legs you're not doing this on the rubber piece now we can do this first we can do this first doesn't matter but what i do think is important to do is to peel your carpet back just a little bit and find a hole so i found that there's one right here and i'm going to go ahead and put my awl in it and i'm going to get that hole in the carpet started it's going to make this easier when you do it so the the part has a very high level of accuracy so if i put this right where the all is theoretically i should be able to come right here and catch the next one you may have to fish around for it just a little bit boom there's the next one keep it nice and straight there's the next one 
and so on and so on. So um, this will make it much easier when you put those screws in. And I have to give those guys a shout out because this is dead exact to whatever they did in the factory 50 some odd years ago. I'm very happy with that. Um, so make sure that you give those holes a plug. It's gonna make this job significantly easier. So ignore all my, all my overspray here. Let's move on to this outer seal. Again, the outer seal is gonna be a tiny bit long for you to cut it exactly nice and snug fit. Same thing applies with trying to not stretch it. So there is your profile, your metal edged bit or the part with the or the part with the inner metal is going to grab on this what I would call a pinch seam. I don't know if it actually is that. Yeah, it is. So I like to start here in the back on this one. I'm gonna get this in here. I'm sure that you could use a dead blow hammer or something, but honestly, if I can do it with one hand with a GoPro, you could probably do it with two able-bodied hands. This seal, I'm not really worried about stretching because it is rather stiff, uh, but you do see that it wants to twist because it comes in a bag all um, twist it into a loop. So you're gonna have to kind of twist it back straight and then I like to just bump it with the palm of my hand and make sure it's in there tight. The goal being that this fuzzy rubber bit or the soft rubber bit is coming to the edge of the door facing the outside like that. So that's what you want. If for whatever reason the rubber is on this side, it's not quite the right one, you wanna make sure that that rubber edge goes like that all the way down. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that guy in all the way across and then we'll cut it up at that end in a different way than, than the other piece we did. There are some spots right here where the metal pinch seam is a little bit wider. So you may either wanna hammer those squeezes together or just know, tend, I tend to rock these back and forth a little bit, give a little bit of rock and I'll go right down over it. So keep that twist in it, getting it nice and flat and you can rock this all the way down. So this is looking great. And if I actually painted this black, it would look excellent. So maybe I will come back one day and cut in the door edges here, but who knows? I would rather work on things to make the car have air conditioning, go faster and do better. So um, this is one of those jobs, again, like I said, that until you realize that you need inner and outer sills or you don't have them, or until you realize these seals are not doing their job, uh, you don't know that you need it, but man, once this job is done, it is going to make a huge difference in how my car looks. And uh, I don't know that it's going to make any sound difference, but the doors will seal nice and tight. I don't think it's going to bathtub float like a Volkswagen, but uh, it's going to be perfect and as OEM as it can be for a car that is in the state that it is. So we're going to run this all the way up and then we're going to cut that piece. So as you get up here towards the A pillar, it does make a couple little turns back and forth and it's a little harder to do. I'm gonna cut this just right about here and then I'm gonna kind of tuck it in under this seal here. So that pin seam does continue, but you get up in here to this cavity, it's not gonna fit. So uh, what I like to do is use a pair of lineman pliers. It's sharp enough to cut the rubber, but it'll also cut that metal. So if you do it like this, Typically that'll cut it in one fell swoop. Now, some people would say that, that, yeah, that pinches the metal. That's great. That means the edge and the end has a nice tight seal. So there is my inner seal all the way around. And now we'll go back and look for our carpet marks and we'll just screw these guys down, screw the outside down. We'll have a beautiful new threshold. So just for comparison, this is a black piece. I don't believe this to be OEM, although the, the pattern looks about right. This came out of a 73 that was my parts car. It's plastic. The new piece is metal. Somebody will correct me. I don't know if they were stainless or aluminum in the uh, early cars, but um, much nicer piece, much higher quality, stamped super well, uh, bent super well, and uh, I think this is gonna last a super long time and look well good in the car. All right. This is just a matter of finding your first screw hole and going from there. It should lap over the harder rubber part, but not the softer rubber part all the way down. So I like to just put this one in the first one. I can actually see the hole I punched. And so I'm gonna get this started. Ideally, I'm gonna start them all so that I have the chance to move it around if I need to, and then go from there. But uh, this thing is cut and punched pretty accurately. So you should be able to be fine going one at a time as well. 
The nice thing about going through this carpet, it's adding a little bit of resistance to my screws, probably helping keep them in place as well. So you can see it's trying to pull out a little bit. I'm just gonna make sure I pull that back, keep it nice and straight. Now these holes are punched in what I would call like a countersunk fashion. So these screw heads sit down nice and tight. And yeah, you can feel this one go right on through and then just tighten them up. This is definitely one of the few places I do not recommend using a power tool to attach. So you should be able to just come in here with a screwdriver and feel what's going on. I can feel that one pop in place and tighten them all down. I'm just gonna work front to back, keep it nice and straight and snug them up. Non-structural, but it is gonna hold your carpet in place really nice so that you can enjoy your 914. And there you go. Big improvement over not having an inner threshold and it'll be great for this carpet to have some retention as well. So seal looks great, inner threshold looks great and the outer, you can see the screw holes are kind of up under here. So I just push this back. So it would be fine to do the outer first. I don't know, I just wanted to do the inner first because it's satisfying to get that outer piece on here. Uh, now's the time to deal with this rust. We're gonna deal with it in covering it up. Um, so we're gonna put that outer on and then we'll deal with the door handle. And there you go, new threshold seals, inner, outer seals, inner seals, all in. So you can see I'm missing two screws here, broken off, broken off. So I'm gonna have to drill that one out. Um, I may have to pull the inner seal back out so I can do that. So can't get a screw in there now, but she's not going anywhere. And uh, my car is looking great. All right, if you're paying attention, this is not a stock door panel. I had the armrest and the pocket deleted when I had my panels done. Unfortunately, this piece is too big, so the winder hits it, but it's fine. I can live with that. So my door panel is super easy to take off. If yours is more complicated, hopefully you know how to do that. So it's just pop this out, one screw here, pop this off, one screw there, and uh, we'll pop the door panel out. Let's do it. So I have removed countless door panels with screwdrivers. This is a cheap Harbor Freight tool. It'll go back here and it just spreads it. It is a great way to save these poppers. And I don't have many left in the panels here. So we're gonna work this around. We're gonna pop our door panel off. And remember, once you pop these, then you lift the panel off straight up out of these hooks up top. So if you watch some other videos, you see we already did the vapor barrier. We've done some insulation in there. So we're just gonna peel back a little bit of that corner to access the door handle seals. All right, peel my corner back. I failed to mention you need the glass in the upright position. There is an Allen key bolt right directly behind this. I don't know that I can show you this with the GoPro. It is right there. And I believe it's a four mil and there is a 10 mil kind of a lock nut right here. So there is one seal right there and there's one seal underneath the half moon. Door handles are expensive. So please be very careful in pulling this off. So I usually do the 10 mil first and then loosen that one from the inside and get it out. It is very helpful to have a ball in long reach here. So I believe it is a four millimeter. Let's see if we can verify that. Five. I stand corrected, five millimeter. So let's pull the door handle off and I'll show you those seals. All right, the door handle is unbolted here and on the inside. And I just kind of wiggle it out here gently. This is a great time to clean this up, get all your wax, get all your dirt out of there. You can see on the door handle, here is one of the seals, which is hard as a rock. And here is the other of the seals, which is not quite as hard as a rock. So. Give this a good clean, give that a good clean, and then we'll talk about getting it put back in there. Another note, if your door is having trouble latching, this is also the time to replace these plastic, don't ask me the name, I will put it in the video here. Uh, 915 Rubber has these available as well. If you got the door handle off, this was something I did on the car a long time ago, 
um, before I really even knew about 914 Rare. So this was probably an eBay version. So uh, we will make sure that these are good and uh, uh, set. They're not broken, they're not cracked because this will cause your door not to latch and not to unlock properly. It is a big deal. It's very easy to fix, something you gotta do. Even if you haven't done it in a while, put a new set in. All right, here's our door handle. Start with a little square guy. You'll see there's a flat side and a recess side. The recess side that way. Start with this guy here. This seal just goes right there. Now, this is one I would consider gluing down, but I generally, like I said, try not to do that. So the best way to do this is for me to set the camera down. There you go. Now you guys can see is to come up here like this. Kind of get that seal where I want it. Run this through the door, get the back one in place and spun correctly. And then just kind of push this down so it's held in place. So it's gonna sit right out there to the front and it's gonna give you a nice seal on your door handle and a nice crisp line with the paint. So that's about what you're looking for. And then I typically will put the screw in from the inside and then put this 10 millimeter on. So let me hold on to this and get this thing tightened back up and we'll have some new fresh rubber isolating and sealing our door handles. Ooh, nice and crispy with new seals there. Feeling good about that? Put that back out. So at this point, we're gonna seal the door back up, throw the door panel back on, and uh, we'll be ready for the next car show with the 914. And that is a job done on the 914. So, so there's always something to do on 914s, especially when there's great parts availability for small stuff. It's simple to do, usually pretty clean, and can make a big difference in how your car looks. So another big shout out to 914 Rubber for getting us set up with those parts and continuing to make parts for a car that a lot of people consider obsolete, old, and not that popular. But I love 914s. I know a lot of you guys do as well. So get them out there, fix them, get them back on the road. Let me know what you're working on with your 914. I am always happy to answer questions here on YouTube. Send me a message on Instagram. I'm happy to share knowledge about fuel injection, my car, working on 914s. I've kind of gained a little bit of understanding uh, over the course of a couple of years having this car, helping other people with theirs. So I'm always happy to contribute to that 914 knowledge. So as always, stay tuned to the Barefoot Garage right here on YouTube. YouTube tells me most people that watch my videos don't subscribe, so do that if you want. And if you want to see what else I'm working on besides 914s and in between episodes, you can follow Barefoot Garage Jacks over on Instagram. Get out there and drive those cars.